Nubara project, as it is officially called, is a Linux distribution that is based on the hugely popular Fedora Linux, but with user-friendly fixes added to it. Nobara has also been recently gaining popularity, so we have decided to check it out. We have installed it in VirtualBox. We have been using it for a couple of weeks now, and here's what we have come up with. Stay tuned. The first impression was an excellent one. There was no need to install VirtualBox guest editions or anything like that. Nobara instantly offered a full screen resolution in VirtualBox. It comes with an intuitive and user-friendly Calamaris installer, which is a graphical installation program that lets you customize your installation with ease. Users simply need to answer several questions to install Nobara on their computers. Right from the start, Nobara impressed us with its smart features. It recognized a new installation and offered a system update right away. How cool is that? Then it launches the terminal app and starts the installation of necessary codecs for smooth running of games, media players and browsers. Users need to approve the installation and then it takes some time to download and install all the codecs and drivers. The system then offered the FlatHub platform update as well. Another user-friendly move. Nobara tries to make everything easy for the user. That's why it comes with Nobara Welcome, an app that enables users to do things that would usually require a significant amount of Linux skills. With this app, you can access shortcuts to update the system, install various codecs, drivers and more apps. Essentially, the Nobara Welcome application takes care of most of the installation of third-party applications, desktop layouts, themes, web apps, proprietary media codecs, etc. For example, we decided to install our favorite video editing application, Kden Live. The app installation went smoothly and Kden Live started as it should. By default, Nobara uses a customized GNOME desktop environment setup. It's obviously GNOME, however, it's customized in a way that it offers a so-called classic desktop paradigm with something like a system tray area in the lower right-hand corner of the screen, and then app shortcuts and the start menu on the opposite side. This is quite different from what GNOME offers out of the box. Still, if Nobara's default setup is not your cup of tea, Nobara offers several GNOME layouts to choose from. Each of them comes with an explanation of what it is and what it brings to the table. Additionally, the GNOME Tweaks app is pre-installed in Nabara, so you can make further adjustments to your system according to your preferences. Another system app 
that usually requires at least intermediate Linux knowledge to be installed, but is pre-installed in Navara, is GNOME extensions. There, you can further customize and enhance your Linux experience. Speaking of the applications, let's see what app platforms Nobara provides out of the box. Let's take an example. As we usually do, we will search for our favorite audio editor, and that is Audacity. This is where Nobara shines. Audacity is offered via official Fedora repositories, then via the fully integrated Flatpak platform, and finally via the RPM Fusion non-free repository. Just to remind you, these are some of the very downsides of Fedora, a fact that non-free repositories are disabled by default, including RPM Fusion, which is the source of a lot of important applications, thus limiting the software packages available. The project also provides Nobara Package Manager, an advanced package manager. Experienced Linux users, accustomed to Debian-based distributions, will most probably find it to be similar to Synaptic Package Manager. It's based on YUM, a free and open source, command line, package management utility for computers using the RPM Package Manager. So, by its philosophy of being a ready-to-go operating system, Nobara brings in many pre-installed applications. So, in the accessory section of the Start menu, there are apps that can help in installing various codecs, drivers, gaming enhancements, Windows programs, and so on. The education section is not that populated, while the games section offers things like Steam and Lotus installed out of the box. In the graphics section, Inkscape, a popular free and open source vector graphics editor, is pre installed. Firefox is the default web browser in Nabara 2, and LibreOffice is the default Office Suite. It's one of the latest versions as of the time of recording the video. Nobara provides some of the metric-compatible alternatives to some of the most popular fonts, like Carlito, the alternative to Calibri, the default typeface in Microsoft Office. Speaking of the fonts, Let's see if Nobara makes it easy to install even more metric-compatible alternatives. We'll look for Tynus, an alternative to Tynes New Roman. Well, it's there in Nobara Package Manager, so all you need to do is to check to small box and install it. And the font is there where it should be. The sound and video section is also equipped with the necessary basics, and we have added Kdin Live to it. The next section is System Tools, which includes TimeShift, an app designed for creating system snapshots and restoring your setup. Utilities is a very populated section in the Start menu, consisting of many useful apps for monitoring and maintaining the system. System Monitor shows that Nabara currently use 1.6 GB of RAM. However, what needs to be taken into account is that we were opening and closing apps for some time and it was expected that the RAM usage would be high. And there is also a section of the Start menu called Other and here's what you can find there. In Nobara Linux everything is pre-configured and the system is fine-tuned so that users do not need to jump through so many hoops and set up things like codecs or drivers. What's more, even the desktop is active and customizable, unlike the default GNOME setup. Nobara offers a huge amount of available software out of the box, 
from various sources, as we have already seen. So, to answer the main question, who is Nabara for? Well, it's not definitely for users who have just started their Linux journey. It's designed for those people who want a better gaming, streaming and content creation experience out of the box and who have some previous Linux experience. We think that Nobara is a great project that improves upon Fedora's features and makes Linux more user-friendly and versatile. We have also read some online reviews of Nabara. Some people point out that all the things Nabara provides out of the box do not make it bloated, but rather it's a feature of Nabara. Some reviewers claimed that updating applications via GNOME software is not recommended and it can even break your system. They point to the use of Nabara software manager, that is YUM extender, or the command line, if that's what you prefer. All in all, have you tried Nabara Linux? What's your experience with it? Share your thoughts in the comment section below the video. Thank you for watching the video. If you like it, please share it. Give us a like and subscribe to our channel to help us produce even more Linux-related videos. See you next time.